Unleavened Bread Ministries presents from your hands, your Unleavened Bread Bible Studies with Jesus David Eels. What can quench my thirsting soul? Purest water made me whole. Let your streams of mercy flow, oh Jesus. God bless you, saints. Thank you for joining us for the Unleavened Bread Bible Study. This is David Eels. Not that that's important. It's really important that the, the Lord's Word be here, though. So we will trust Him to do that, right? Father, we ask you in Jesus' name that you would anoint this teaching, that you would lead us and guide us in all truth, Lord, for the truth will set us free, as Jesus said. So, Father, we're asking you, Lord, to let this be truth today. Let your grace be upon us, and let our eyes and ears be blessed in the Spirit to understand what you're saying, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Well, saints, we've been talking about uh, beloved spiritual Israel. And um, I know that some of you probably need to go back and listen to the previous teachings to be to have a foundation for this but i can't do anything about that so <laughs> i'm just going to take up where we left off god bless you you know uh the apostle paul said in romans chapter 9 let me just read this to you it says he afore prepared unto glory verse 24 even us whom he also called not from the jews only but also from the gentiles and he said and he, he saith also in Hosea, I will call that my people which was not my people, and her beloved that was not beloved. Wow. He was prophesying of the days when Jesus came, when God began to turn away from the Jews and turn to the Gentiles. And he says, I will call that my people which was not my people, and her beloved that was not beloved. God loves the church, folks. The church isn't uh, secondhand for God. You know, God loves the church. And it goes on to say, And in the place where it shall be said unto them, You are not my people, there shall they be called sons of the living God. Wow. And you know, folks, concerning the remnant of, that actually came in to the New Testament when Jesus came, and a remnant that's going to come into the New Testament in these days because the things that have been are the things that shall be. The things that have been done are the things that shall be done. There's no new thing under the sun, the Bible says. History repeats. First, first Israel and then the church. They are our timepiece. Okay? Um, he goes on to say, and Isaiah crieth concerning Israel, if the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, it is the remnant that shall be saved. Out of all those Israelites that believed the gospel in the time of Jesus, there was a remnant saved. Paul claimed to be among that remnant. And now in these days, there's a fulfillment of that for the church because there is a remnant of Israel going to come into the church in these days. Well, you know, um, I don't want to cover, go back and cover what we've covered very much, but I'll just do a little bit here. You know, he said in chapter 10 and verse 20, it says, Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. That's from Isaiah 65 and verse 1. And I became manifest unto them that asked not of me. The Gentiles who didn't know the Lord and had no um, gift of grace to seek after the Lord, God drew them, the Gentile church. And uh, a remnant of Israel joined with together with these people at that time, in the time of Jesus, and up until this time, um, as we can see in chapter 11. 
I'm going to say verse 21 first. It says, and, and to Israel he saith, All the day long did I spread out my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. So God was tired of spreading out his hands to a rebellious people. And he turned to the Gentiles and gave them a gift of grace. Okay. Chapter 11. I say then, did God cast off his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God did not cast off his people which he foreknew. Well, did he cast off a people? Yes, he cast off a people. But he didn't cast off his people which he foreknew. Now, what um, Paul was saying, of course, was that he was in that remnant which God foreknew. We read last time, I believe, uh, Romans 8 and 29 says, for, for whom he foreknew, he foreordained to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Those that are foreknown are foreordained to be conformed to the image of his Son, which Paul was, and which these Gentiles that he's speaking about, that, it, that were not a people, but now had become the sons of the living God. They were not beloved, but now they became beloved. And so God joined together the first fruits of the Gentiles and a remnant of Israel. Paul claimed to be among that remnant. remnant. And he, he explained that, that Elijah pleaded with God against Israel, uh, that they have killed your people, Lord, and they have digged down your altars, and I'm the only one left. And God said, no, Elijah, I've got, I've left 7,000 that haven't bowed the knee to Baal. So God had a remnant in that time. All of Israel had turned away, but 7,000. And Paul's applying that to his situation and, and Israel's situation, that there was a remnant left at that day. And God joined them with the first fruits of the Gentiles. And he calls that his church, his called out ones, called out from among the remnant of the Jews, called out from among the Gentiles. And he goes on to say in verse 5, even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. At this present time, meaning of course at that time, there was a remnant according to what? The election of grace. Eklektos is the Greek word. It means chosen. Who was chosen? The remnant was chosen. Even though all Israel be as the sands of the sea, it's only the remnant that shall be saved. Who was the chosen? All of Israel? All of natural Israel that rejected the Lord? No. They were not chosen. The ones who were chosen were those who were foreknown to be conformed to the image of his son, to be Christians. Well, what's the problem here? The problem is the Lord has made a condition. Let me read this to you, and I'll come right back there. John 8 and 21. He said, Therefore, again unto them, I go away, and you shall seek me, and you shall die in your sins. Now, he said this to the Jews. You shall die in your sins, and whither I go, you cannot come. The Jews, therefore, said, Will he kill himself? That he saith, Whither I go, you cannot come? And he said unto them, You are from beneath. I am from above. What did he mean by that? He was born from above. John chapter 3, verse 5. And verse 3, too. He was born from above. They were born from beneath. They were of this world. He said, Ye are of this world, and I am not of this world. I said, Therefore unto you, that you shall die in your sins, for except you believe that I am. Notice that. No, he wasn't in there. Except you believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. You say they were chosen? Nope. The ones that chose him because he put it in them to choose him. You didn't choose me, I chose you, he said. Those were the chosen. 
The Lord put the choice in them. He gave them a gift of grace to come to him, a gift of faith. By grace have you been saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. It's a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. He gave them a gift of faith to believe and to come to him. Today, the Jews who do not believe that I am, that is, that the Lord Jesus is the Jehovah of the Old Testament, the Yahweh, the YHWH, that he is. Do they have a gift to believe that? If they don't, they're not the foreknown and the chosen. Paul was in his day. Those disciples that came in were in that day. And what did he say? Verse, back in verse 7, Romans 11 7. What then? That which Israel seeketh for, that he obtained not. He obtained not. But the election, that is the chosen, obtained it, and the rest were hardened. The chosen obtained it, and the rest were hardened. The foreknown obtained it, the rest were hardened. So you see, God joined in Jesus' day, the same thing he's going to do in this day. He, he joined a remnant of the first covenant people with the Gentiles. And in these days, he's going to join a remnant of the second co uh, covenant people with a remnant of the Jews in these days because history just keeps repeating okay and we are told in in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 11 it says now these things happened unto them that is the Jews by way of example and that is the word type or figure these things happened unto the Jews by a figure and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages are come they were a type and a figure for us. Just as the Jews failed in the end of their covenant, the majority of them, only a remnant of them became saved, so also the Gentiles are doing the same thing, following down, following down the same road. And as we read the rest of Romans 11, we see that Paul confirms this interpretation of his words from 17 on down. Let me read that very quickly. But if some of the branches were broken off, that is of the olive tree, and that was talking about the natural branches of the olive tree. If some of the branches were broken off, and thou being a wild olive was grafted in among them, and didst become partaker with them of the root of the fatness of the olive tree, and of course, that's talking about the grafting in of the Gentiles. Glory not over the branches, but if thou gloriest, it is not thou that bearest the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Now that's what the Gentiles would say. Branches were broken off of the olive tree that I might be grafted in. Now some people say, well, David, that sounds like replacement theology. Well, tell Paul about it and tell God about it. Because they're the ones that wrote this, right? No, the replacement, folks, is a replacement in the kingdom. We're not talking about replacement in the world. The New Testament spiritual Jews don't want the possessions of the physical Jews in the world. What we see here is a replacement in the kingdom. Because they rejected the Lord when they were called. And the Gentiles didn't. They were replaced. That's just plain and simple. I mean, if you don't like it, take it up with Paul. Take it up with Jesus. Take it up with the Lord. But it's very simple here. Now, like I said, it's not replacing them in the letter. It's replacing them in the spirit. We have a spiritual kingdom. They had a literal kingdom. They were literal Jews passed on their blood by the seed of man. We are spiritual Jews passed on by the word of the Lord. Belief and faith in the word of the Lord. Verse 20. Well, by their unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. See, the only way to stand in this olive tree is to walk by faith. If you walk in unbelief, 
you're broken off. Doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, as he's fixing to go on to say here. So he's speaking to the Roman church here. Romans, he's talking to Gentiles. He says, by their unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, neither will he spare thee. And of course, we are coming to the ends of the times of the Gentiles. When the same kind of a falling away is going to happen, because history just repeats. They were the type, and the church is going to be the fulfillment. In verse 22, Behold then the goodness and the severity of God towards them that fell severity, but towards thee God's goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Folks, that's going to be fulfilled and has been fulfilled throughout the centuries. If a, a people don't endure in their faith unto the end, they don't get to see the answer. Jesus said, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Verse 23, and they also, if they continue not in their unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Here is another fulfillment of the remnant. If Israel be as the sands of the sea, it is the remnant that shall be saved. Once again, we see a remnant is going to be grafted back in. This is another fulfillment. They were in the end of their covenant. Now we're in the end of our covenant. Same timing. Okay. Verse 24. For if thou wast cut out of that which is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which are the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? And he goes on to say down in the next verse, he said, And so all Israel shall be saved. Now, who's all Israel here? Who is all New Testament Israel here? Well, we just saw a remnant from among the Jews in the days of Jesus, the Gentiles being grafted in, and a remnant from among the Jews being grafted in in these days. Okay, so we got two fallings away here. we got a falling away of natural Israel, but a remnant coming in. we got a falling away of many Gentiles who have professed Christianity. And a, and a replacement of them of the Jews. So we see this same thing, this uh, same scenario, starting with the same verse. Remember, we started here in chapter 10 in verse 20. He says, I was found of them that sought me not. I became manifest unto them that asked not of me. We find the same scenario if we go over to Isaiah 65. In verse 1, he says, I am inquired of them that asked not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. He revealed himself to the Gentiles, right? And I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, they walk in a way that is not good after their own thoughts. A people that provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and burning incense upon bricks, so on and so forth. Speaking about natural Israel. This is a prophecy in Isaiah of the grafting in of the Gentiles. Okay, But as we read this chapter, we see the same scenario we just saw in Romans chapter 10 and chapter 11. Okay. For instance, in verse 9, we are told, And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains. A seed. Well, why not, why not um, Jacob and Judah? Because they were not foreknown. But this seed, this remnant, is foreknown. Same scenario. Okay? an inheritor of my mountains, and my chosen shall inherit it. There it is again, the remnant who is the chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen, Jesus said several times, especially when he was speaking about 
calling the Jews to come and partake of the marriage feast, and they were too busy with their own business, and the Lord was fed up with them, and he turned and called the Gentiles. And he said, for many are called, but few are chosen. Well, Paul, the disciples, the apostles, those early remnant of natural Israel, they were the chosen of the Lord. They proved it by their actions, by coming to the Lord and enduring the trials of their faith and enduring to the end and manifesting Christ. Remember, the ones he foreknew are the ones that he predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. These are the chosen. When you go out into a field, to pick the crop, you pick the right fruit. You don't care for the plant. You don't care for the overripe fruit. You don't care for the green fruit. You're picking the fruit. And, of course, that's the chosen. The rest is not chosen. My chosen shall inherit it. My servants shall dwell there. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks in the valley of a core, a place for herds to lie down in. For my people that have sought me, but ye that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for fortune, and that fill up mingled wine unto destiny, I will destine you to the sword, and you shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, you did not answer. And when I awake, when I spake, you did not hear. But you did that which was evil in mine eyes, and chose that wherein I delighted not. When I called, you did not answer. There's two fulfillments of that, folks. Remember, Israel is the type and the shadow. The Gentile church is the fulfillment. When the Lord spoke a parable in Matthew about calling, Matthew 22, Matthew 25, about calling his people, they didn't come. Very few of them came. He, he said, when I called, you didn't hear, you didn't answer. And now in these days, folks, history is going to repeat because the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 12, there's a man-child ministry coming forth in these days, like unto Jesus' ministry, except it's going to be worldwide for New Testament spiritual Israel, not for natural Israel. See, the type is literal, is the letter. The fulfillment is spirit. You see, we are the spiritual Jews. They are the letter physical Jews. They were the type and the parable. When, he, when Jesus gave a parable, it was literally true, but there was a spiritual fulfillment. Okay. Well, the same thing is going to happen. The Lord is going to come in a man-child ministry to call Israel out of Babylon. I'm talking about New Testament spiritual Israel, the church to come out from among them and be separate. What did Jesus do? He called his disciples to come out from among them and be separate. He went into the sheepfold, he said. He called his sheep by name, and he led them out. And now the same thing is happening. When the man-child ministry begins to call, send forth the call of the Lord, some are going to come out. Others are going to fight like they fought against Jesus. Other Pharisees and Sadducees of our day are going to fight like they fought against Jesus. History is going to repeat, except on a larger scale, because as you know, the church is worldwide. Israel was just a little geographic, physical Israel. You know what? My uh, A brother, close brother, friend of mine, his name is Bolivar, told me many years ago, that he said, Lord, what's going to happen to the carnal brethren? God said to him, Isaiah 65. When he turned to Isaiah 65, the Lord highlighted this for him, verse 12. Well, now he was talking about Gentile church. This was first fulfilled to the Jews. But remember, they're a type and a shadow for the church. 
Okay. And when he read this, he understood. I will destine you to the sword. You shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, you did not answer. When I spake, you did not hear. But you did that which was evil in mine eyes, and chose that wherein I delighted not. The same thing is true today. You know what? This was fulfilled in the days around 70 A.D., when the beast came in and destroyed the harlot of apostate natural Israel. And in these days, folks, the same thing is going to happen. We read in the book of Revelation that the end of the harlot being destroyed by the beast because they apostatized, they turned away from their Lord. They didn't come when he called. They refused to repent. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. He's talking about those who fell away. Behold, my servants. Notice this. He's speaking to natural Israel here. And he's saying, my servants. Meaning, of course, they were not his servants. Same thing today, folks. Who is it that is the servant of the Lord in the church? You have to look a little further and fewer between to find them. Behold, my servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you shall be put to shame. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall wail for vexation of spirit but you shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen speaking to natural israel you shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen and the lord will slay thee and he will call his servants by another name now that was fulfilled in jesus's day and it's about to be fulfilled in our day again well, how was it that the Jews that didn't come when they were called of Jesus, how was it that they left their name as a curse unto God's chosen? Yeah, I'm all the way through the Bible, this was our example. Like Manasseh, you know, it was spoken of that people would be like Manasseh. They used his name as a curse, as someone who fell away from the Lord, who walked away from the Lord. Do you know that the natural Israelite who rebelled against the Lord and who died in their sins and who are dying in their sins because they don't believe that I am he, as Jesus said? They leave, they're leaving their name as a curse. Now, in Christian circles, there are ignorant Christian leaders who are glorifying the natural Jews, giving them a covenant that um, they say is just as valid for them as the New Testament is for the Christians. These apostates, they're blaspheming the Lord. There's only one way. Except you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. They had to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And except you're born from above, you'll not see. John 3 and 3. Nor enter, John 3 and 5, the kingdom of God. We have to be born from above, not just of this world. What is it that begets us unto God? It is the word of God. We have to believe the word of God. It goes in. It recreates the life of Christ in us. Those whom he foreknew. He foreordained to be conformed to the image of his son because that word was bringing forth that life in them. So you see, God is joining. God is reprobating. He did it in that day. He's going to do it in this day. Uh, turn with me to Galatians 3 and verse 27. For as many as of you as were baptized into Christ did put on Christ... There can be neither Jew nor Greek. There can be neither 
bond nor free. There can be neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. There is only one covenant. It is in Christ Jesus. Now, how do we get in Christ Jesus? Well, the Bible says, if that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning, meaning, of course, of course the New Testament gospel, then you abide in the Son. And uh, if we walk in his, as he walked, 1 John also says, that everyone that says they abide in him walk as he walked. So we see what it is to abide in Christ. We have to believe that he is who he said he was. He is the Messiah. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Savior. And we walk in his steps. That's what discipleship means. A learner and a follower. And he says, in this covenant, it doesn't matter whether you're Jew or whether you're Greek. You're one in Christ Jesus. God joined a remnant of the Jews and the Gentiles into one covenant. There's only one covenant. Jesus is the end of the law to everyone that believeth, the Bible says. There is only one covenant. And we see in Ephesians, let me read a little bit of that to you. 2 and 4. But God, being rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, we. Now, Paul is speaking, of course, of himself, who was a remnant of the Jews, and He's speaking to the Ephesians, who are a first fruits of the Gentiles. We were dead through our trespasses. He made us alive together with Christ. By grace have you been saved, and raised up us up with him, and made us to sit with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. No other place. In Christ Jesus. They are joined to us in Christ. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where are heavenly places? Only in Christ. Where can you be, see, and enter the kingdom of heaven? Only in Christ. Do the overwhelming majority of Jews who do not believe in Jesus, are they entering the kingdom of heaven? Obviously not. Are they chosen? Obviously not. Okay. And in 8 he says, For by grace have you been saved. Through faith, meaning, of course, Jews and Gentiles, right? And and uh, that is not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast or glory. Now, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that once ye, that is the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision. Now, you, you remember in Romans chapter 2, that were told so plainly. I'll read it to you. For he is, verse 28, for he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, neither that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter. Do we believe the word of God? As Christians, our covenant was made with us, and he tells us, those who are circumcised in flesh are not Jews in this covenant. Now, of course, we identify them as Jews. We don't have anything else to call them, but not according to the covenant. You have to be circumcised in heart to be a Jew in this covenant. We are spiritual Jews, not physical Jews. It's a spiritual covenant. It's not a letter covenant. The rules and the regulations under the law were all fulfilled in the New Testament. And we who walk in obedience to the New Testament is fulfilled in us. So here he says, who were called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision. Called circumcision. What does he mean by that? Well, of course, in the New Testament, those who are circumcised are circumcised in heart. The flesh has been cut away from their heart. They no longer walk after the flesh. Verse 12, that ye were at that time separate from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Whoa, we're no longer alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. We belong to Israel. We are Israel. New Testament born again people from the Jews and from among the Gentiles are New Testament Israel. 
and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye that once were far off are made nigh in the blood of Christ. But he that is our peace, who made both one, that is, Jew and Gentile, he made both one. We are no longer two, we are one. There are people who like to uh, dissect the New Testament and say, no, this is only to the Jews, and, and it's different from that which is spoken to the Gentiles. Well, of course, Peter, for instance, was an apostle to the Jews, but what he was doing in evangelizing the Jews was bringing them into the same new covenant, the same justification by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, the same new covenant. And, of course, Paul was an example of God's apostle to the Gentiles. And people point out that, well, Peter spoke only to the Jews, and Paul spoke to the Gentiles, mostly to the Gentiles. It makes no difference. They were preaching the same gospel. Some people like to say, oh, no, that letter's to the Jews, and this one's to the Gentiles. Folks, it says here, he made both one. And in Galatians 3, you're one in Christ Jesus. There's only one covenant. He only accepts one covenant. To say that he will accept bulls and goats is contrary. It is an abomination, Isaiah chapter 1 says. There's only one sacrifice, only one faith, and you must believe that Jesus said, I am, or you will die in your sins. Okay. For he is our peace who made both one and break down the middle wall of partition, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, that he might create in himself of the two one new man, making peace. Verse 16, And might reconcile them both, in one. How many times does he have to say this? No, folks, when a Jew is accepted by God, it's because he's come in to the New Testament and become a spiritual Jew, a fulfilled Jew, a born again Jew. God's plan from the beginning was to bring this to all of his people. But when he called, they didn't come. One unmarried wife, another had to go prove a yoke of oxen, another had some, bought some land. They all had reasons for not coming, all fleshly reasons for not coming when he called. And God was angry. He said, go out in the highways and byways and compel them to come in. And he sent his armies and he destroyed those evil people for mistreating his prophets and apostles that he sent to them. And that happened in 70 A.D. Reconcile them both in one body unto God through the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And he came and preached peace to you that were far off, and peace to them that were nigh. For through him both have their access in one spirit unto the Father. No separation here, folks. It was made, we were made one in Christ Jesus. And, and yet you see a lot of... Um, you see a lot of Christians thinking that the the Jews have the favor of God and they want to go back under the Jews' covenant. They want to go back under the law and be separated from Christ, Galatians 5 and 1 says. And they want to start um, calling God by the Jewish names when God in the New Testament forsook that. He wrote the New Testament in Greek because it was a common language of that day. And even Jeremiah chapter 3 tells us that the when the Gentiles come to their New Jerusalem, their spiritual Jerusalem, which Paul points out, he says, you have come unto the city of God, to the heavenly Jerusalem. He wasn't talking about the earthly Jerusalem. We are members of the heavenly Jerusalem. When Jeremiah spoke of those people in Jeremiah chapter 3 from 17 on down, 
You know what he said they would call him? My father. What did Jesus, look in your concordance and see what Jesus always called him. Father, my father. What did his disciples call him? Father, my father. No Jewish names. You see, folks, we weren't the afterthought. The church is not the afterthought. The church is the one he chose from the beginning to be conformed to the image of his son in these days. The greatest fulfillment of that's coming. And he says over here in, uh, let's see, verse 6, to wit, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. In Christ Jesus through the gospel. Folks, there, uh, we are heirs of the promise, the Bible says in Galatians. Let me read that to you. Excuse my Bible is getting kind of old and I'm, the pages are falling out, but I love it. <laughs> it's my only valuable possession. <laughs> he says um, in 4 and 28, But we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. Now, what did he say the natural Jew was here? Children of the handmaid. Who was Ishmael? A child of the handmaid. The Jews who were under the law in Galatians chapter 4, he says, are children of the handmaid. He said, we who walk by faith are children of the free woman. Wow, that's very different. Why is he applying that? We thought Israel would represent them, and Ishmael would represent the Arabs. But no, Paul is saying the children of the handmaid are those who are in bondage under the law, under the Jerusalem that now is, that's in bondage with their children. And, by the way, if we go to Romans chapter 9, let me read that to you. Verse 6, It's not as though the word of God hath come to naught, for they are not all Israel that are of Israel. Not all Israel that are... Who is all Israel? We just discovered who all Israel is in Romans chapter 11. It's those who are grafted in, a remnant of the Jews in Jesus' day. Following that, the Gentiles, excuse me, they were in the olive tree. And then the Gentiles were grafted in. And then, of course, a remnant of the Jews in our day would be grafted back in to their original olive tree. And he said, and so all Israel shall be saved. So we see that all Israel is the joint church, the joining of the born again Jews and Gentiles in one church, called out ones. And here he says, for they are not all Israel that are of Israel. All Israel is not talking about natural Israel, folks. Only a remnant of them is saved. Neither because they are Abraham's seed are they all children. In other words, just because they are naturally born of Abraham's seed, that doesn't make them children of God. Who is Abraham's seed? We are through faith, the Bible says. Neither because they are Abraham's seed are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called, the son of the free woman. Who did Paul say in Galatians? For was the son of the free woman. We are the children of the promises. Okay? Because they are Abraham's seed, are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, it's not the children of the flesh that are the children of God, in the New Testament, of course, but the children of the promise are reckoned for a seed. We are reckoned for a seed. We, as Isaac was, are children of the promise. In other words, we are born of the promises of God. We're not born of the law. We're born of the promises of God. These are what give us life. When we believe these promises, power comes into us. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to the one that believes. And who is that? These, according to Romans, are the sons of Abraham. 4 and 16. For this cause it's of faith that it may be according to grace, 
to the end that the promise may be sure to all of the seed, all Israel, right? Not to that which is of the law, not to that only which is of the law. In other words, the faithful under the law who heard Jesus preach the gospel to them. He went and preached to the spirits in prison. Okay. They were the faithful. They heard. He took captivity captive. He took them to heaven. They are underneath the altar waiting for the rest of their brethren, right, to fulfill their course, according to Revelation chapter 6. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Here's Paul speaking to the Romans, and he's telling them, Abraham is the father of us all. We have one father. The Jew who's born again, the Gentiles who's born again, they have one covenant, one father, spiritually speaking. So where do we get all of these crazy doctrines that God is really interested in the Jews fulfilling the old covenant? When the Bible tells us that it was done away in Christ and that those people who don't understand that are blind. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm going to read uh, verse 11. It says, If that which passeth away, speaking of the old covenant, was with glory, much more that which remaineth is in glory. Having therefore such a hope, we use great boldness of speech, and are not as Moses, who put a veil upon his face, so that the children of Israel should not look steadfastly on the end of that which was passing away. What did Moses represent? The law. What did Christ represent? Grace. Okay. He put a veil so they couldn't look on that which was passing away. In other words, they couldn't see him because of the veil. Right? But their minds were hardened. For until this very day at the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil remaineth, it not being revealed to them that it is done away in Christ. There's a veil upon the minds of not only the Jews, but the Christians, if they don't understand that the old covenant was done away in Christ. Christ is the end of the law to them that believe, the Bible says. And so you see, Christians who go back under the law become, according to what Paul said, children of the handmaid and not of the free woman. That's, this is your homework, folks. You go read Galatians chapter 4 and the beginning of chapter 5 and believe what it says. And believe Ephesians chapter 2, that there's no two covenants. There's only one covenant. There's only one gospel for both Jew and Gentile. We've become one in Christ Jesus. If if you abide in Christ, you have to believe that which was spoken from the beginning, John said in 1 John. If that which you heard from the beginning abide in you, then you abide in the Son. See, it's the real true gospel that causes us to abide in the Son, not religion, not Babylonish religion, not the teachings of men. This is all leaven that's been added to the unleavened bread. It's only the unleavened bread that gives life. Remember what the Lord said in Exodus chapter 12, speaking about the last seven days in which God's people were in Egypt, the type of the world, right? What did he tell them in the last seven days? He said, if any leaven is found in your houses during those seven days, that you will be cut off from among the people of Israel. Do you understand we have one more chance to accept what God's Word does say and reject what men say, which is Jesus warned us 
Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Beware of the leaven of Herod. That's the beast. The harlot and the beast, beware of their leaven. Don't let them add anything to the word of God. If you permit this, you will be among those that fall away. You'll be rejected. Remember, the lukewarm are going to be spewed out of the body of Christ in the latter days. A great falling away, the scripture speaks about, in these days. We can't afford to make the mistake of either going back under the law or preaching an antichrist gospel that God accepts the Jews when they are still are going to stay under the law or go back under the law or don't accept grace. We can't accept that. There is no salvation in any other name, we are told in the book of Acts. In no other name is there salvation. And uh, God's not going to accept them. I mean, I don't have any dislike for the Jews or any other man. Uh, my job is, of course, to love them into the kingdom. And, I, you know, recently I had someone that just attacked me over and over and over because I wouldn't agree with them in their dislike for the Jews. I don't have any dislike for Jews whatsoever. I mean, the Lord Jesus cried over them. He wanted them to come into the kingdom. He would have gathered them as chicks under a hen, he said. He was the hen. The word means grace there. Hen is the word for grace. He would have gathered them under grace. And he cried for them. He mourned for them. And we should too. And for the Gentiles who will not even the Gentile so-called Christians who have a name that lives, but they are dead. We should mourn for all of them, Jew and Gentile, to come into the true kingdom of God, which is to submit to the word of God, be disciples of the word of God. You know, it says in Revelation chapter 2, in verse 9, I know thy tribulation and thy poverty, but thou art rich. And the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews, and they are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. What did Jesus say to the Jews? You're from beneath. I'm from above. You are of your father the devil. Unless a man is born again, he is from beneath. He is of the devil. And the people in the New Testament who worship in synagogues, who claim to be Jews, and are not, according to the word of God, they are not. They are of a synagogue of Satan. And he reiterates that in the same verse in chapter 3. And he says... Behold, I give of the synagogue of Satan, of them that say that they are Jews, and they are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Who are the beloved, folks? The church. Here is the Philadelphia church. Who are the loved of the Lord in the New Testament? I will call her beloved that was not beloved. And the people who say they are Jews in the New Testament, and they are not, will serve those who are. These are the people that will rule and reign with Christ. A born again. Not only born in flesh, but born in spirit. Jesus Didn't Jesus tell that to Nicodemus in John chapter 3? Except you be born of water and of spirit. I know a lot of people have uh, differences concerning that, but water and spirit. Oh, Paul tells us the water is the washing of the water with the Word. And the Spirit, of course, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit takes the water of the Word when we walk by faith and cleanses us. 
And this is the promise of the new covenant that God said he would make with his people after those days. We are after those days. The covenant that he made was that he would give us a new heart and a new spirit, and he would wash us with clean water. What is that? The word of God. We have to be born of the water and of the spirit. We cannot put our trust in men. Well, brethren, I, I think the most exciting conclusion, I'm not sure next next meeting will be the conclusion, but I'd like to show you what this really does for us in the Old Testament. How that now we can understand the Old Testament. When we realize that those Jews in the letter were a parable for us as Jews in the Spirit, and the things that happen unto them are for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come, we find that the whole Old Testament begins to open up to us when we see ourselves in those Jews. Remember, the Word of God cannot be broken. The things that have been are the things that shall be. The things that have been done are the things that shall be done. There's no new thing under the sun. The letter will be fulfilled in the Spirit. The letter in the Old Testament will be filled in the New Testament. And uh, the next study that we're going to do is going to go into that, the, how we can apply this in the Old Testament to understand what's really being said there. They didn't see good. They were like Leah. Their eyes are weak. And we are like Rachel who have eyes to see, fair eyes to see. God bless you. Thank you for joining us, brethren, and we'll, we'll do it again. For more information and materials, go to www.americaslastdays.com. 